Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jeff Bentola. You can call me Professor Jeff. I'm just here to give us a little bit of an introduction into the class on contemporary moral issues, that is uh, Philosophy 102. Uh, so I'm going to go over four big things in this uh, video lecture that we have here today. Uh, the first is what moral philosophy even is and how it fits into the you know greater field of philosophical study. Uh, I'm also going to go over the different specific moral ideas that the philosophers in this class are going to talk about. Uh, we're going to spend basically the first month of the course just looking at different philosophers' ideas about what makes an action moral. Uh, so we're going to touch on that really quickly. Uh, then I'm going to go over some of the different ways that we can think about those moral ideas, that we can kind of question them, adapt them, apply them, think about them in different kinds of ways. Uh, we'll see how that works more as the semester moves on. Uh, and finally, morality is no good without a little bit of application, which is really what this course is mostly about, is how those moral ideas apply to specific issues. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of overview some of the moral issues that we're going to look at, and uh, that'll be it. Uh, so be sure to take some notes. Uh, reach out if you have any questions, comments, concerns. You know, drop a comment or a like if you feel like it. Uh, otherwise, let's get going. So to begin with, we have this question, you know, what even is moral philosophy? So, uh, we can understand the whole field of philosophy as breaking down into three general parts. Uh, these two over here don't really concern us too much. Uh, if you're interested in this, I do have a video that explains this a little bit further in my Philosophy 101 playlist if you want to check that out. Uh, but metaphysics is basically questions about being. What exists, what doesn't exist, why or why not. Uh, epistemology is the branch of philosophy dealing with theories of knowledge. How do we know what we know? How sure can we be of what we know? Again, doesn't really concern us here in this class. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is falls under the branch of axiology. Okay. So axiology, generally speaking, is the branch of philosophy that deals with making value judgments. Okay, so those can occur in a bunch of different contexts. Some of the most important are law, art, or philosophy of art, which is really known as aesthetics, and morality, specifically, which again is our focus here. So just to give you some context on what we're studying, you know, it's really kind of a very small part of the whole study of philosophy. Uh, but, you know, if we're going to define morality itself, or theories of morality, they have to do with what makes a person good or bad, what makes an action good or bad, or why we should try to be good people. Or, you know, maybe why it doesn't matter. There are some people who theorize that as well, and we'll see what how some of all that works out too as we move forward in the class. So make sure you have all this written down and let's keep going. All right, next up here, uh, we have the different moral ideas that we're going to be looking at in the first month of the class here. Uh, and we're gonna look at really all of these different theorists and these different ways of thinking about morality and then we're going to apply those to different moral situations that occur in the real world. And that'll be, uh, you know, kind of the last part of the video, too, is just going over what those are. Uh, but we can really think about any different moral issue in terms of these moral ideas. So just to give us an overview, uh, we're really going to begin the course with the definition of justice from Plato. Uh, and later on, we'll see a different definition of that from Rawls. There really are a lot of different ways to think about this idea of justice. You know, you can even start thinking about that on your own a little bit, too. Uh, next, we're going to look at virtue theory from Aristotle. Uh, and, you know, while everybody has heard of virtue before, Aristotle has a very specific way of thinking about it uh, in terms of balance and vices. You know, we'll see see how that goes. Uh, next up, we're going to be looking at Immanuel Kant and what is known as his deontology. Okay, so a deontological moral system 
depends on following rules, okay? Creating and following fair and moral rules is what makes something moral according to Kant. And we'll see, you know, he'll argue about why that is the case uh, much more fully. But pretty much to contradict that, we have John Stuart Mill and his consequentialist moral perspective, all right? So this is one based on the idea that it's an action's consequences that determine its morality instead of our adherence to a specific set of rules. Okay, so those are in direct contradiction. And really, they can both be applied to any moral situation, uh, usually to different ends. Uh, but next up, we'll be looking at uh, Virginia Held's idea of care, which is really quite interesting. I mean, again, care is one of those ideas that we maybe throw around a little bit, but uh, whether or not we really think about exactly what that means, uh, you know, well, we will, essentially. Uh, and finally, we will look at some skeptical or relativist theories of morality. Uh, just to review, skepticism is a method of doubt, right? So a moral skeptic is going to say that maybe morality doesn't exist. And we're going to see that from Friedrich Nietzsche. It's always kind of fun, just as like a very alternate perspective on how all of this works. And uh, we'll also be looking at Eric Fromm, who is a, uh, he's really a psychoanalyst. He's, you know, a theorist I really like. Uh, and he has an interesting moral relativist theory. And I'll get into uh, what this relativism thing is a little bit in the next section of the video. But, all right, again, make sure you have this all written down. You can sort of even just look through the syllabus and see that these are, you know, the first six or eight readings of the semester right here. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's move on. All right, so uh, what I have here I labeled as moral categories, but uh, as I said before, it's really just some ways to think about some of the different moral ideas that went over in the previous section of the video. So we can think about uh, moral ideas and issues in terms of whether or not they're individual and or social. So does it just apply to me? Uh, are these moral rules or ideas just focused on a single person? Or do they have to do with really all of society or a larger collective of people? Uh, sometimes it's both. But, uh, you know, we'll see, and I'll even ask you guys at certain points, do you think this is more of an individual theory of morality, or is it more social? And I'll ask you, you know, why you think that. Uh, we can also think about morality in terms of it being relative or absolute. So, uh, if a system of morality is absolute, that means that it applies in all different places, all of the time, universally, 100% of the time, there are no exceptions. Uh, if a system of morality is relative, that means it can change. It's a little, uh, you know, it can adapt to different situations. Sometimes the rules are a little bit different depending on what we're talking about. Uh, you know, maybe different places have different moral rules. And if we're going to say that, you know, everybody's moral rules are equally valid, uh, even if they're different, that would be a relativist stance on morality. Uh, so we can also think about it in terms of whether it's the motive behind an action or its consequences that determine the morality. And this goes right back to the Kant and Mill debate, which we will get into, of course, about whether or not our motive to follow rules is what makes an action moral or if it is the consequences of those actions that make it moral. And finally, there's egoism versus altruism. Egoism is essentially the idea that what benefits me is good, right? The ego. The ego is number one in egoism. And altruism is what we can really think of as actions that are charitable. We're benefiting others over ourselves. Okay? So that's really that for 
uh, the different moral categories. We'll revisit this consistently over the course of the semester. Again, make sure you have these written down. Make sure you have the explanation of what they are written down because it will be coming up frequently. All right, last but not least here, we have the actual moral issues that we're going to be looking at over the course. And, uh, you know, if you're following along in your syllabus here, you can see these are just the different sections that the class breaks down to. Uh, and again, this is by no means all of the moral issues that exist. Uh, you'll see the final paper assignment is to analyze a specific moral issue according to some of the perspectives that we're going to look at over the course of the class. You can pick one of these, but you don't have to. In fact, it's usually more interesting if you pick something that is outside of what's in the class specifically uh, that maybe means something to you personally. But, all right, to get into this, uh, our first section of the moral issues that we're going to get into is sexual morality. We're going to look at issues of consent, prostitution, and homosexuality. Uh, the next section of the course is going to be about life, death, and personhood. And we'll see some different arguments for and against abortion, euthanasia, and the death penalty, also referred to as capital punishment sometimes. Uh, next up, we'll be looking at modernity. So what does this even mean? Okay, I like to, you know, this means different things depending on who's talking about it. Uh, for the purpose of this class, when we're talking about moral issues relating to modernity, these are things that are that come about because the world is increasingly interconnected, whether it's because of the internet or because of the ability to travel to different places more easily. There are new issues that come up, such as war and torture, immigration, diversity, and this this idea of cultural relativism, the different cultures have different ideas about what's right and wrong and how much they should interfere with each other based on that those relative moral ideas. And finally, I really like to talk about aesthetics a little bit. Uh, you know, we'll see some really interesting arguments that really link the ideas of beauty or ugliness to different moral ideas. Um, and we'll see some arguments about the nature of narrative hypotheticals. Okay, so this is basically when a uh, work of art, typically something like a movie or a book, uh, introduces us to a story with a character who makes different moral decisions and how those moral decisions might impact the audiences viewing it. All right, so we'll see an analysis of Spike Lee's movies and uh, a really interesting argument about horror films in terms of that stuff, too. Uh, so this is... This is basically three quarters of the class right here is going to be looking at different arguments for and against these ideas and analyzing what uh, moral ideas we're going to favor in those arguments. All right, so again, uh, you don't actually have to write this stuff down. Again, these are all in your syllabus, but maybe start thinking about what you might want to write a final paper about. Right, everybody, that's going to do it for the first lecture video. Uh, they're not all this long. You know, this is just kind of like a big introduction to the course. Uh, so, again, we covered the different, you know, what morality is as a branch of philosophy, the different moral ideas and philosophers that we're going to be looking at in the first third of the course, different ways to think about those moral ideas, as well as the different moral issues that we're going to be looking at in the, you know, second two thirds of the course. So, uh, thanks for watching, you know, reach out with questions, comments, if you just want to say hi, it's a shame we can't actually see each other in person, but this is pretty much the next best thing, right? So, alright, I'll uh, see you next time.